about the convenience of living in the city, but it does come at the cost. Well, what about an inner city pad with the running costs of a rural shack? Sound too good to be true? But we're in the trendy Melbourne suburb of St Kilda. And we've found a house so cheap to run, it's smack on the money. Pete, it is hard to believe that this home is built on a block that is just 240 square metres because this feels enormous. Yeah, Joe, look, from the street, it presents itself as a, as a humble little 19th century cottage, but it's actually been restored to its original red brick pointed charm. But the owner architect here saw an opportunity to turn an old relic into a contemporary masterpiece. So what looks simple from the street is actually a labyrinth of rooms and spaces. There is a lot to explore. Look at that. First thing I love is the use of colour in mm. here. And it comes from the architect and owner's love of camping. There's even a tree stump over there. So he's brought in the reds and the greens of the Australian bush and then it's offset with all this beautiful timber. Yeah, look, this is like walking through a painting, this house, yeah. Joe, where the, the architect has become artist. But instead of paint, he's used materials as his palette. Yep. The colour, the texture, the imperfections and stories is all celebrated in the materials. Yeah, I mean, look at the flooring that we're standing on. This actually came from the Ramwick Racecourse when it was renovated. The original house was actually dismantled rather than demolished so they could reuse as much of it as he could in the new design. So basically here the ordinary has been turned into the extraordinary. At ground level at the front of the original house the two front bedrooms have been retained as bedrooms. This is where the adventure really begins. Now there are 13 different levels of flooring. It's just a visual feast with every twist and turn you take. Have a look at the stair. They're ripped off the old lining boards, exposing the original plaster oozing through the battens. I mean, who would have thought of that? It looks great. Sure does. Every space has its own individual character. Now the new building is basically a steel frame with a collage of materials lining it. This is really a handcrafted building. Yeah. You couldn't solve this on the drawing board. No, and they've ended up with a four bedroom, three bathroom home that has a studio. If one of the owners' businesses that's run from home, a double garage, a basement, and that's not even mentioning the enormous <laughs> living space upstairs. Look, Joe, the question has to be asked, how do you cram all of that on a tight inner city block where the, where the neighbours are literally on your boundary but still get natural light and ventilation? And it's been achieved, Joe, in the plan by carving out two light wells on either side. Here cut against the original chimney, once was hidden, now exposed to feature. And what about this? Underneath the stair, not a dusty old cupboard, but a beautiful bathing area looking out onto a vertical garden. Yeah, and then off the master bedroom you have the ensuite. Now that light well starts from behind the kitchen upstairs, flooding it again with natural light. But you can actually see the neighbour's wall. And because you can access all that cool air from under the neighbour's home and you've got cutouts at the ceiling level and floor level, standing here, you can feel a breeze. Look, what's happening now is those light wells, Joe, are acting as gills, drawing air into the centre of the house, then up through this chimney, which has been lined with all these ornate vents. The house is breathing. It's not only beautiful, but it's practical as well. The end result is that the only cooling you need for this house is what's provided by Mother Nature herself. As for heating, round the house you find these old radiators which have been salvaged from skip bins, painted up red and they look great. Underneath the garage, an entire level dedicated to water storage, there are four of these massive tanks holding 44,000 litres. That's enough for a farm, really. Mm -hmm. On the roof, a bank of solar panels. Yeah, currently they do 80% of their water heating from solar power and they have a gas booster for the remainder. 50% of all their electricity comes from those solar panels. And they've actually even got wiring on another part of the roof to have another bank of solar panels put on. And when they do that, this home will be completely off the grid. It's also perfect temperature down here for storing Ryan Grigsy. Hands off, emergency use only. <laughs> so clever is the design of this place that they've actually ended up with three times the amount of outdoor area that they had in the original home design. As well as all of that built space. Yeah. I love this, Joe. This industrial flooring used in gantry turned vertically to create a screen. And that's working well with all these recycled timbers. I suppose the tip here, though, you can have all this chaos, this variation of yep. materials, as long as it works against clean lines. Mm -hmm. And what we have here is a window frame or the balustrading, so that chaos is contained within order. Good tip. Also, like the sleepers and stairs. Beautiful. Above the original house, Joe, a little bit of outdoor space. And best of all, this grass is very low maintenance. 
onward and upward, and yet another outdoor space carved above the new addition. Oh, a rooftop garden that has six raised galvanised veggie gardens. Look at this big beetroot for anyone for dinner. <laughs> it's a farm in the sky. I love it. But the recycling doesn't stop here. This is plastic furniture, plastic cladding, which is also seen in the splashbacks of the bathrooms and the laundry, and it's made of milk bottles. <laughs> One million recycled milk bottles. <laughs> this house is definitely unique. There's a full cream design, this one, Joe. <laughs>